Hey, welcome back. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist helping you go further faster, but factually with your family research. This is a footnotes show and footnotes is where all the real resources are. So today is an interview with Sherry Moulter. She is an employee over at the North Carolina, let me get this right, the North Carolina Civil War and Reconstruction History Center. And they have a new project coming up. There's actually a couple things going on. They are constructing an actual history center and they are collecting stories from your Civil War ancestors. And so I had an opportunity to speak with her today. Here's what she had to say. Welcome to Footnotes. Today I have uh, Sherry Moulter. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. And uh, she is with the North Carolina Civil War Reconstruction History Center. This is located in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And she's going to tell us about this project that's coming up. Welcome to the show. Tell well, us thank about, you so much. Tell us about this history center. This sounds so exciting. Well, it, it definitely is. And hopefully everything will be finished within the next couple of years. We have moved three of the historic buildings down to the southern end of the arsenal, and those buildings are now being restored. Um, and then that will prep the area for what will be the History Center, which is going to be less of a collecting museum and more of a teaching museum. And it's going to be telling the stories of all North Carolinians during the Civil War and Reconstruction time period. Wonderful. Wonderful. So this will um, not only go beyond the, the four years of the Civil War, is that correct? Tell me about the time frame you're looking for. That is correct. Um, we're actually working within the time frame from 1860 to about 1900 because we do want to work in the stories of Reconstruction as well. Mm -hmm. So much happened in North Carolina at that time period. And it's important to kind of get the whole picture. And we wanted to make sure to incorporate the stories of North Carolinians now and in the past. So we're also working on gathering those ancestor stories that people have, whether they be from oral tradition, just passed down, or whether they're working on some genealogical research mm -hmm. and they've actually found records that they want to piece together, tell a story, and have it documented in our online archive. And to that end, we're, we've created a project called 100 Stories from 100 Counties. Now we know that's not exactly historically accurate because there weren't 100 counties back then, but there are now. And so we were trying to make sure that we got stories from everywhere, whether they were counties back then or not, you know, that we were covering all the area of North Carolina. I was looking at your website and uh, boy, you've got a lot of stories up there already. And in fact, I'm going to try and share that screen. Um, so going through your website here, this is a beautifully done website. Um, I, I'm quite impressed. And one of the things that I think genealogists, uh, even though your brick and mortar is not quite up and running yet, uh, I think featured stories right here caught my eye and there are yes. a lot of stories already in here. I think one of and the they can be searched if someone's actually trying to find records, you can either search the archives by county affiliation or name um, and see what's been added. Later. Now, if someone does see their ancestor has a story already in the archive, that does not mean that we want them to leave theirs out. I mean, there are always different perspectives. There are always people who find different things that others have not found. And they're just different perspectives, period. I mean, it's, so we welcome even stories that are duplicates about someone else we have a story about already. Was that clear? Yes. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> so um, just to make sure that, because I know we were talking offline before we started recording this, um, to make sure that the audience clearly understands this is a project if I understand it correctly is a project in which you're collecting Civil War history stories and you are also going to have a history center that is not necessarily collecting artifacts but you're collecting educational materials and stories to share with the public exactly it's going to be located in Fayetteville North Carolina that's right. Is that, that's not like an archaeological dig kind of site, is it? 
Well, actually, we just did an archaeological dig this past summer. My daughter got to take part. It was so exciting. Um, How fun. They just find some fascinating things. We are not disturbing the areas of archaeological interest. The ruins will remain there, and so will the other areas that need to be investigated further. Um, but yeah, we had a dig here in July, and it was really cool. How fun. So um, have you guys raised all the funds you need for this project? Not all. And okay. we are still being matched through June 2019. So if anyone does want to donate, whatever they give to us, the state is matching it through, 29, through June of 2019. Well, that's good um, to know. Yes. Yeah. So donations are always welcome. Okay. Okay. So are, I assume since construction is underway now, you said there is some reconstruction going or construction yes. going on now. Um, the three buildings that make up the history village are the Davis House, the mm -hmm. Arsenal House, and the Colbert House. The Colbert House will be an education center geared toward um, graduate level and doctorate research from different NC state universities. Mm -hmm. There will be a library there and there will be places for these students to come and do more research with the things we have on hand and stay. Okay. Um, the Arsenal House is going to be our digital education program, digital education outreach program. And that is where we will be working with the documents and creating the programs for the teachers from K through 12th grade to give them primary documents and lesson plans and ideas of how to use the primary documents. We already did a program in Wilmington to talk to teachers about what they want and need from us. And that digital outreach education program is going to be geared toward uh, taking care of their needs and making it so that everyone can use this history center, even if they're not in North Carolina. Um, Okay. So in the Davis House is basically going to be a visitor center kind of thing. It is the one that we are doing the least amount of work with. We're keeping it as original as possible. That is the house that apparently belonged to one of Sherman's classmates, and he did not burn it because of that past um, relationship with this man. Wow. <laughs> um, we still have the house, and we're trying to keep it as close to the original as possible. And so it will just kind of be there and be a place for maybe temporary exhibits or you know, just simple walk through to see what used to be. So that one's kind of gonna be undisturbed. Nice, nice. You know, I noticed that the, um, the title on here, uh, uh, on, the, on the flyer that you sent me, uh, says 100 stories from I think it's 100 stories from 100 counties that is it so have you uh, gotten stories from every county yet I can tell you that I have contacted networked or been involved with genealogical societies from every county yeah yes wonderful when someone will submit the stories we are true to what they send us so if right. it's Jackson County but it has since been split off and become a different county, it's still Gaston County in our archive. So it's a little hard to measure, you know, exactly whether or not we've got all the counties. Of all these stories that you've gotten, have you got a favorite one? I have several. Oh, um, anything you want to share? The story of this young man who left home and he was only 21, which is the same age as my son at the time. So I think that's another reason why I got so attached to, to him, Kinda hit him. Um, but all he wanted was to have a family and you know, live his life and he kind of got caught up in this wrong time. He, he didn't, he fought for the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much that he believed in all of that the Confederacy represented, but it was because he felt it was the right thing to do. And unfortunately, this young man did not make it home. Mm. And I mourn for him. I actually found him at the cemetery because I had to go see him. So, I mean, I do get attached to some of these stories coming in. We just had one yesterday about a young woman who was 15 at the time of Sherman's march through this area. Um, it was Anson County. Mm -hmm. And her description of that experience was just... Um, 
heartbreaking, um, probably. Heartbreaking, yes. Yeah. And her uncle was killed on site. Mm. And, you know, she was talking about her three brothers who were still fighting. They didn't know if they'd survived or not. So, I mean, these, these stories make these people real. I mean, it, you definitely do get attached. I mean, there's several of them, the Ray brothers. They're actually buried here in Cross Creek Cemetery. And there are some really beautiful stories out there. They're oh, all good stuff. <laughs> yeah. I myself have uh, some ancestry uh, that I might be able to dig up the stories and send over to you. Mm -hmm. um, and the battle at Fort Hamby is really not a Civil War story so much as it is a renegade story after, immediately after the war ended. Uh, about a bunch of, uh, of soldiers were running around uh, pillaging and raping and murdering women before their men came home. And they were... Um, so a bunch of uh, a bunch of men took up arms to fight these boys, and my ancestor is actually I think he's a great great uncle. I'd have to go look it up. Uh, uh, died. He was one of two men that died at the Battle of Fort Hamby in in uh, Wilkes County. But apparently uh, there was a bunch of archaeological digs up there. Um, I found some newspapers at the Wilkes County Courthouse and such. So maybe I'll put that together and throw it out for you, too. I think that would be wonderful. Oh, and just so your viewers know, mm -hmm. um, the stories do not have to be military related. I mean, mm -hmm. if you just know something about a woman who stayed at home or right. a child who grew up and was somehow... There was a story that someone shared with me about a child who had witnessed his father's death and then had to be left with the father's body while the mother went to go seek help. Wow. And it shaped his life. And the great, great nephew um, had some childhood experiences with right. his life. Right. And how that shaped their world and, and listening to those stories. So it's, it's not that anyone has to send in just military related information that's not it at all because there were many who did not fight but they certainly lived here and they were here during the time period and their experiences are valuable so we want to make sure that we represent them as well as possible for anyone who has any information about them one of the points that you had sent to me was we especially encourage all Civil War and Reconstruction stories about those who have historically under, been underrepresented, I think is what you were saying here, yeah. African Americans, Native Americans, women, children, Moravians, and Quakers. Yeah, we do have a lot of records on Quakers, and we've received a lot of stories about them. But from time to time, I find that um, even with genealogists who are sending me their information, it will be very man-centric. I'm not too sure if that's a real word or not, but that's just kind of the way I see it. It's son of, you know, Billy son of, John son of, David. And even all of a sudden, the grandparents and moms are, are kind of missing. So we want to just make sure that people are aware that we're not diminishing the value of that information at all. But if they happen to have the information about the women yeah. <laughs> and their female ancestors, it would be nice if they were part of the story too. There are some fascinating stories about the nurses and the women who fought uh, both sides, Union and Confederacy, who actually put on uniforms and went out there and did the job. Now, granted, we know that some of that history might be more difficult to find because records can be harder. Right. <laughs> But um, the stories are certainly welcome. I think what you guys are doing is terrific. So thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> what else do we need to know? You can share your stories online. Okay. And that's at the nccivilwarcenter.org slash share your story. It should be on the featured story page. If you hit featured stories, and ah. there it is. And then you put your story in. And then if you want to upload a file, you can upload either a picture or if you wanted to upload the Word file of the actual story itself, whatever you'd like. And then basically, I'm not a robot and send. <laughs> there you go. The awesome. stories are not altered. They are simply kind of vetted just to make sure there aren't any grammatical errors and uh, year errors. You know, if, if it's something glaringly right. obvious, then we right. will change that. But other than that, we do not alter your story. 
and it will go up, it will be published in the archive and available to everyone. Um, you will receive an email once the story has been uploaded to the actual site um, and let you know that your story's there for you to see and share and do whatever you want to do with. Uh, Sherry, is there a limit on how many stories people can submit? No, absolutely not. And there's no deadline either. People oh. can submit as many stories as they'd like and this is going to be going on for quite some time, at least a couple of years that we'll be accepting stories. Wonderful. What if people have just images and not necessarily stories, but they've got, they know that they've got, you know, here's my ancestor. He's in a civil war uniform. I, I know he was there. Maybe they don't if know they much about If they have him, information but. about that person um, and they would like to upload it to our site, we will happily take it and have it be okay. part of the archive. Awesome. I thank you so much for sharing. How can they get a hold of you or the, uh, I guess all the information is here, info nccivilwarcenter.org, it looks like. Yes. Um, there's also our Facebook page, which is, you know, facebook.com Facebook NC Civil War Center. All right. Lots of times if someone has a lot of information, but they don't necessarily want to write their own stories. They just want to share this information. They'll make copies of whatever they have and send to us. Right. We will work on putting those stories together Ooh. and then let you know once they've been uploaded to the site. Um, you we say we, it's them. really you, huh? Awesome. Um, yes, it's primarily me. <laughs> well, I'll put all that information in the, in the show notes as well. Thank you so much, Sherry, for joining us today. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure, and it's definitely a program that I believe in. So Awesome. I'd... Awesome. Well, good work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that was certainly exciting. I truly enjoyed having that conversation with Sherry. Uh, she is a wealth of knowledge. And so make sure that you check out the show notes. And if you right under the description, if you click on show more, that's where all of those links are going to uh, pop up as far as all of the different details about how to find the History Center and how to share your Civil War history stories uh, with the History Center. And, you know, this is going to be for generations to come. And so you want to make sure that your ancestors are a part of that preserved history. So until next time, keep on researching your family tree. I sure hope you liked that episode. If you did, please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to make sure that you get notified of the next time we upload videos. Also, the show notes that we talk about throughout the show are here. This is the description. Underneath this where it says show more, this is where you'll find the show notes with all of the links about the episodes that we talk about. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching Genealogy TV.